Jesus so that she can show what. Let's welcome one of us, the Commissioner for Women Affairs, Dr. Mrs. Glory. Put your hands together as she takes uh, the microphone. Continue. Put her on. You're welcome. And you will be is good we do respect to the minister in charge of this parish the family pastor all the elders and everybody present here i want to first of all thank the almighty god for the opportunity he has given me because for months i have been planning to come here and redeem my vow but because of going out almost every sunday today i decided to come to this morning service before I attend to other official matters. Praise the Lord. Because I know the Bible says it is better for you not to make any vow than for you to make a vow without redeeming it. I want to give this testimony to the glory of God and to encourage all of you that God is able. I am a commissioner today because of God's promises. I am a commissioner today because God has said yes. That is why this the office does not really enter my head. When I remember what happened, I know it's God who has made me a commissioner. Praise the Lord. And there was a time I come to this church and cried to God. I came alone and I told God, when you wipe the tears from me, however, I don't know how you will do it, that I will come back to this church and tell the people in this congregation that you can do all things. When you see any tears in my heart now or my eyes, it's tears of joy. Praise the Lord. Brethren, in 2012 to early 2013, I faced challenges. And of course, I cannot say God is not faithful because before then, God was so faithful to me since I was born. In my academics, in the three universities I went to, God met me the best. Even in the University of Uyo that I was lecturing before the appointment, my job was a matter of choice because I had two appointment letters almost the same day. Can we put our hands together for Jesus? Praise the Lord. That was why in 2012 and 13, when I first with challenges, there were times people asked me questions I couldn't answer. And there were times I would ask God, where are you? All the embarrassments you could think of in this life were given to me. Humiliation. Because people think or thoughts that the ones who can create children. Praise the Lord. So one day, in the afternoon, when the embarrassment was getting out of hands, I said, the God of my fathers, I have to go back to the Presbyterian church. I knew why I decided to come to this church. Not that I've not been going to other churches, but I know that from my, even when I was a child, my parents used to discipline us in the Presbyterian way. And I know there is God in Presbyterian Church. No matter what people are saying, what people are doing, when you are faced with any trouble, you don't need to see any pastor. Come to this church. There is God in this place. I came one afternoon from my office. You know, there is a way something happened or people will talk anyhow. You don't need to tell people because there is nothing they will do for you. When I came there in the afternoon, I, I didn't see anybody in the church. So I got to that place and sat down there with my suits. 
The nursery school uh, children came back from school. They were shouting, Auntie, Auntie, you are sitting on the floor. I didn't bother. I was praying there. When I finished, I left. After a few weeks, the embarrassment kept on again as if uh, God was not alive. In fact, it got to a point I was teaching Sunday school one day in my church because I'm a Sunday school teacher by God's grace. Somebody came to me and said, Auntie, so with all this, you are still teaching Sunday school. What will you tell people? When I got to the house, I said, God, that question is not for me, it's for you. So one night, I came here, I saw the security man about 9 p.m. I told him I want to enter the church. He said, there is no program going on in the church. I said, I know. He said, but the pastor is not around. I said, I'm not looking for the pastor. By the time he looked at my face, nobody asked him to open the gates for me. Brethren, I am saying this to encourage you that no matter the trouble you face, don't go astray. When I came here, I sat down here. I couldn't pray. I was singing choruses. And that choruses were my prayers. I'll just mention the choruses because I told God, when you do it for me, I'll come here. Sorry for wasting your time. I sang this one. I said, Praise the Lord. Another one, I sang this one. see me smile today they don't know that god has done something for me and the last one i said after praying here brethren that was the day god consoled me and no matter what anybody said i wasn't interested again i was comforted i was consoled i left this church and i decided that even if somebody will come and ask me, oh, glory, what am I hearing? I will tell the person, just take what you have heard. So, when I left, after about say, two weeks, somebody invited me for a church program. And in that church, a man of God saw me. He's an interdenominational uh, fellowship and said, young girl, God has answered your prayers. In this state, you will be a commissioner. I laughed in that church. I laughed because I wasn't a politician. My parents are not politicians. So if the man of God had said, oh, maybe you will have promotion or something in the university or research or anything, I, I couldn't even say that, man. I was just looking at him. He even gave me his number that I should be communicating with him to pray with me. When I left that place, I drew that number away. I have to say it because I was telling God, let it not because of this problem that everybody will want to be praying for me. I was very careful. Praise the Lord. Brethren, when I tell people, and I stand here to say that it is God Almighty who made me a commissioner for his name to be glorified. I was just praying midnight. They called my phone. They asked me, which university did you had, uh, go to? this and that, your degrees, and I told them. And before you know it, they said, the governor's wife is looking for you. I said, me? For what? I never knew her. So when I went there, she didn't ask me, who are your parents or are your parents politicians? Or so there was nothing like a political history. When God wants to help you, wherever you are, God or people will find your location. <laughs> He, she only asked the person 
that mentioned my name because they had brought some people there and they were rejected. Where is the lady? The person said, look at her there. She said, are you Dr. Glory Edith? I said, yes. She said, if I ask you to do something, will you do for me? I said, madam, if it is something I can do. And that was all. And I left that place. The day they announced my name over the radio, Breton, I university. People were looking for me from morning till afternoon. When my brother came and said, are you okay? They are announcing your name. They are looking for you. I said, how do you know I am the one? I went to one professor. I said, prof, I am told that they are announcing my name as a commissioner nominee. What am I supposed to do? He said, Lori, if you are tired, you pack your things and go. Who will announce you as a commissioner nominee? I don't know you as a politician. I left. I went to another professor who was a former commissioner. I said, Prof, I don't know what to do. They said my name is being announced as a commissioner nominee. He said, Glory, don't tell anybody. It can't be true. But if it is true, I will fear God. Brethren, that was a story. And I became a commissioner by the special grace of God. That is why when I tell people, that I am grateful to the governor of this state, His Excellency Chief Dr. Gus Lopo and the wife, people do not know. They didn't know me from anywhere. They didn't know my parents, they didn't know my family background. For them to just see me one day and accepted me as a commissioner, it is not easy. Even when people were asking, when my name was taken to the House of Assembly, nobody knew me. Even the house member in my local government said, he doesn't know me, but God knew me. Hallelujah. That is why I am here to redeem that vow. Because during that problem, almost all the assets I had in life were taken away from me. But God has given me those things back. Praise the Lord. And not just that. God... Through his divine connection, I was posted to Ministry of Women Affairs and Social Welfare for a purpose. God sent me there for a purpose, to go and see things by myself, because in that ministry we deal with orphans, widows, women, and children. And I want to testify to the glory of God, it's not yet time, that through that ministry, God has used that ministry to bless me. Money is not everything, but for what I was crying for, God has answered my prayers. Hallelujah! And I told God that when you wipe the tears from me, I didn't need to come with the crowd. I didn't need to come with anybody. Because when you make a vow, it's not something you show up. I was saying, even if I see one person, I will come and redeem that vow. And today, to the glory of God, I am on my knees today to say, Father, for taking away the shame from me, for making me who I am today, and for protecting me since I became that commissioner till today. And because you are the one who will make me to learn well, be thou exalted in Jesus' name. God will for you and your children in Jesus' name. And I want to give a token to this of one million naira. Praise the Lord. Oh Lord, I am very, very great. Everybody, I want to try this.
Thank <laughs> you. 